Good day, everybody. This is the Marcel Patut, and welcome to another edition of the original Free Kick. On this edition, we will be playing the presser or press conference of LA United manager Gonzalo Pineda as the team prepares to host FC Cincinnati. As always, to follow everything that we do, go to the mothership, the sportsapplier.net, premier site for news and notes in the world of sports. You can also go to our social media platforms on uh, Instagram at Facebook and all the other ones. I'm blanking today and uh, Twitter. Yeah, just go to those and you'll be able to find us under the Sports Inquirer or Emarso too. And you will be able to follow everything that we do. And finally, go to our other platforms where you listen and watch content such as YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and much more. And once again, just search under Sports Inquirer or my name, E. Marcel Pertut, and you'll be able to find everything that we have going on. And make sure you subscribe, share, and like everything that we are doing. You appreciate it. it. Helps out with subscriptions and much more. Okay, so we were able to attend the presser of Atlanta United manager Gonzalo Pineda on April 18th. We're recording this on April 19th, and the team is preparing to host FC Cincinnati on April 20th. And uh, Gonzalo goes into various topics, including the injury reports, about the summer aspirations of uh, Tiago Amada, and just much more on the team and where it is at this point of the MLS regular season. Enjoy. Uh, what is his availability for Saturday? Yeah, I think he's going to be available uh, to start or just to, to be available. Well, okay. And John Day? John Day, same. I think the, today he trained as well. I don't know if you saw that, but yeah, yeah. He, he trained. Um, and uh, yeah, I think both will be available. Okay. That's expectation, but we'll see tomorrow. Yeah. Is it just type, is that the same for Gigi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I expect yes. Okay. <laughs> it's just we we'll always have to see after they're back how they respond right. tomorrow, how they're feeling, and we make a good decision. But my expectation is both will be available. Yes. And after you watch film of the Philadelphia match, you got another tough opponent coming up in Cincinnati. What did you learn from that that can, y'all can apply to Cincinnati if you get a lead and try to get those three points? Well, we talk about that with the players, uh, the, the alertness that we have to have in certain moments. Uh, we switch on in all the moments of the game. We talk about this quite often, but I felt like this, day, this game, we were doing a pretty good job in that. It was only, I think, a circumstance there with the pass back to grab, and, and we, we couldn't uh, react better. But uh, yeah, it happened, and we will never forget. We watched the film. I think tactically, the, deep, the team did very well. Uh, we watch a few things in the fans there, how we can be more aggressive and how we can create better chances, but that happened in the second half, and especially at the end of the game, uh, understanding that we we're facing one of the best defensive teams in the league. Um, we could have done better, but even with that, we created enough expected goals um, in that game to, to secure the three points. We couldn't, so that's a lesson, and we'll, we'll try to, to do better against this next. Just asked about playing in the Olympics and Copa America, and said he hopes to. That's curious if you have thoughts on that. I hope he plays against Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care. No. Any term. reason you wouldn't? Short term. Short term. All right. Yeah. Gonzalo, what is, as a coach, the most frustrating part of watching your team through the way it be? Because it wasn't tactical. It wasn't that you changed something. It was like human error, or decision making. So what is the most frustrating part for you? How do you fix it? Obviously. Well, the frustration is not actually for me, uh, it's not like I feel for me, I feel for the players that did a great job in, in a game. We should have won and they didn't get the, the reward. So put the effort, they were concentrated most of the game, doing defending very well the attacks from from uh, Philadelphia, attacks that are really hard to prevent because they are so transitional, chaotic, that it's really hard to understand the patterns other than kicking long balls, second balls, a lot of runs and numbers in behind, and then their attacking players can be anywhere. So then that reaction to that chaos was really good. They understood that and they were not in one good position, the next man is covered, and it was really good. I felt like that. We, we shut them down pretty well. Um, but again, the reward didn't come, not for me, for them. They, they are the ones that play, and uh, I, I felt for them. They should have rewarded themselves, but hopefully it's a good lesson for everyone to learn how to do better, how to 
make sure after a lead, especially a good lead, who's here at home, seven to eight minutes, you are able to uh, consolidate the game for us and, and uh, not just maintaining the advantage, but why not increasing it? That's, that's for me the main lesson. And yeah, hopefully we learn from it and we move on. There's, I mean, there's still a lot of new players, and it's a young team still. Is that part of this this beginning part of the 2024 season, getting everyone to just still understand each other? Yes, uh, we're a young team, but at the same time, I felt that we have added in the last six months uh, a lot of guys in the prime with a lot more experience, right? So Bartek has close to 200 games, I don't know, a little bit more, a little bit less, but 200 games. Tristan the same, uh, Shante the same, Stian the same. So. You know, plus Jakub, plus some other guys. Thiago should be actually pretty close to 200 games. So uh, Abraham. So we have already enough experience with Lennon. I mean, I mean, you, you start to Saba. We, you start to see the lineup, and you start to see guys with a lot of experience too. So now, of course, we, we didn't have a few of those. Uh, so we went a bit younger, but that shouldn't be an excuse. I think, and, and eventually, young players learn from these type of experiences. So. Hopefully it's a good lesson for everyone, not just the young, the experienced guys, it's for everyone and, and we can do better collectively. Gonzalo, alguna actualización o la actualización acerca de los lesionados? ¿Quiénes están listos, quiénes no? Sí, eh, muy probablemente Shande y, y Yaku estén disponibles para el partido. Eh, ¿Qué esperas del partido del sábado? Un partido difícil, duro, considerando el rival. Eh, el año pasado se perdió de local y se empató de visitante. Eh, hoy se espera un partido totalmente diferente. Sí, me da muy buena pregunta porque eh, en, en ambos partidos, digamos, en los últimos dos partidos contra ellos, en casi visitante íbamos ganando un partido y, y dejamos ir esas ventajas. Pues justo hablando de lo que pasó en Filadelfia, es muy importante tomar esa lección y aprender a mantener los resultados porque en los dos partidos creo que fuimos mejores que Cincinnati en, en los 90 minutos, pero íbamos ganando y dejamos en los últimos minutos del partido en casa dejar ir los tres puntos y no pudo ni siquiera rescatar uno en ese partido. Después de visita, vamos ganando, creo que el equipo jugando muy, muy, muy bien, eh, nos hacemos expulsar y, y, y perdemos un jugador y viene, viene el empate. Entonces, eh, esas son lecciones una vez más que tenemos que aprender, pero es importante empezar este, jugando bien, todo empieza de ahí, todo empieza de jugar bien y de empezar ganando los partidos, empezar metiendo el primer gol, creo que normalmente cuando tú metes el primer gol tienes las probabilidades, los números lo dicen de, de, de sacar los tres puntos y una vez que estemos en ese, en ese momento, ahí es donde vendrá eh, la pregunta, aprendimos de las lecciones pasadas o no, Entonces, ese partido espero, un partido donde estemos eh, con si en inglés con el front foot y estemos tomando la iniciativa, el protagonismo del partido, ojalá que podamos ir ganando el partido y va a ser una muy buena prueba para mi equipo ver si aprendimos esas lecciones. That's all I wanted to ask about me. Uh, what improvements has he made over the last few games from first start to this last game of the I would say, it's crazy. I was talking to Tim about that today, about the first game. that He made his debut 6 1 against Columbus. Uh, and what was happening through his head and all that. And where is he now? Not just in his starting lineup, that's relevant for me. It's, it's, it's where is he as a player? Where, what is his level now? and how much he has improved. So we start to go over a few of those. And for me, a few things, right? Number one, his aggression improved big time. You see how confident he is to go 1v1 against Carranza in the air. Uh, the way he covered the spacing behind, his body position, his angle, something that he works with, with Diego quite often, uh, his angles to, to make sure he can press or he can cover the back, his awareness of the surroundings, always understanding who's in his back, who's in front of him, where he can jump, where he can stay. So that overall understanding of time and space as a, as a defensive player has been improving. But the other one for me is more technical, more positional, is defending the crosses. How he's able to block the crosses and the shots now compared to that game against uh, Columbus. Uh, it's something impressive to me. Uh, you saw the two tackles he did inside the box this game against uh, their attackers against Philadelphia. And he was cut backs from certain areas that are very dangerous, and he was able to put his foot in front and make the tackle and make the action happen. So I think those little things have been amazing to see the progression. Because it's been a long time, it's year and a couple months since that game, and, uh, and how much he has improved. Uh, so yeah, we're quite happy, but of course, 
uh, stay grounded, always aware of those things and stay grounded. He is very grounded, so we expect to continue with his development. What's the next step in that development? Probably leadership mm -hmm. once, but, but I think we're, we're far from that. I think mm -hmm. right now I want him to be stable and, and consistent in that performance. Now for me the focus is to stay grounded, to stay focused on all those little details that bring him here to this moment, like in this, in this shape, in this form. Mm -hmm. And uh, once he has this, I always put this tag of the 100 games, uh, you know, 100 games to be a professional. After 100 games, you're a pro. Uh, and, and he has to find his way because through those 100 games, you have ups and downs, at times more pronounced than others, but we all go through that process. After 100 games, you, you know what to do, and then you can start to be a little more vocal, more of a leader, more of a uh, presence in the locker room, more the guy that, that pick up the, the guys around you. That, you can progress that. So I think he's still in a phase where he has to focus on the process and the, and the development side and continue improving. Uh, but as of now playing, just, just consistent. What did you think of him and Luis as a pair in this last game? They, they, they did great, both. As much as I'm talking about Noah now, I think this also big improvement of Luis this game compared to last year. And, and last year was very good. I think his standard was really, really good. But in terms of the aggression he showed this game on and off the ball, off the ball, he was so aggressive to press in areas that normally he wasn't doing. And not that I want him to be, you know, leading his space just just because I tell him to be. He's intelligent enough to know when he can be aggressive and when he has to stay. But those moments where he can be aggressive, he was aggressive. And then uh, I think on the ball, he was way more aggressive, willing to break the lines, commit a little bit more. I like one action when we were from side to side in the build up with three, and then he was in behind the nine, and then he dribble with the ball, I call it commitment, he has to commit towards the winger and then from there you create the 2v1s. So then instead of passing the ball to the fullback, easy pass and then it's 1v1, you commit towards the winger so he has to jump and then the guy in behind is the fullback. So situations like that I think he's doing much better and uh, so yeah, a big improvement but now the pairing, the communication was going to be. I want to ask you about Rafa Marquez, your former teammate with Mexico linked to potentially getting the first team job with Barcelona. What do you remember about him and what do you know about him that you think would prepare him for such a big job globally? Well, a couple of things. Number one, I think whole Mexico would be so proud of him if he get that job. I think it's something that for everyone, um, Mexican fans, would be a, a big, big moment. I think we have Javier Aguirre as the main reference for us as coaches and as Mexicans doing great job in, in Spain. And uh, Rafa has a lot of, has the respect of the whole country. Uh, for what he did as a player, in my case, for what I know as a person, uh, he was already the main experienced guy in the national team when I was very young and inexperienced. And he was always the calm. He was always calm, composed, uh, mentally very tough but always composed, always in control of his emotions most of the times. He had a couple of red cards that were showing off, but normally he was very stable. Normally he was when the toughest, uh, the, the toughest the game was, the most composed he was. And he was, you know, defending one big one against Riquel, and no problem, he was taking care of that. And, you know, it was that type of player that get the job done. And then his quality was amazing on the wall. He was a, a true, true uh, leader on and off the field. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that intelligence and, and, and top mentality will get him far. Uh, I don't know him as a coach, to be honest. I haven't followed his students, but again, I, I will wish him all the best if he gets that. The uh, U.S. Open Cup draw is at one yeah. or could be a pot with Tormenta, Charleston, and Charm. It's curious if you have a preference for who you get, no. and you know, what will be your approach to that first game in seven? Uh, trying to win, as always, this franchise has to attempt to win, uh, of course there will be decisions to make in terms of lineups and all that, but, but it's always with the intention to win. We don't go to a game trying to lose regardless of the lineup. And especially now that the guys that are coming when needed are showing very well, have to, to give opportunities. I think it's a good moment to give opportunities to our players, but uh, eventually it's a tournament that uh, we, are, we are in and we have to try to win. Does last year's result what did you learn from that to apply to this year? It was a bit of an accident, many things happened in that game. Uh, I think now we're much better. I think our depth is, is, is not, not just player by player, but the, the moment the, the players are. 
general, the mode squad, we've seen a very good level today. What's really, really competitive out there, and so that could be the right sign that, that uh, we're more prepared this year. But again, these type of games happen when you know expectations for the team in the first division goes against a second, uh, second division team, and, and at times these things happen. You know, whether it's you, you, you are too confident, extra confident, overconfident, and then you get these surprises. But I hope you learn from that and, and you can you can do better. Would you like to see FI United? As the visiting team, I mean, let these smaller clubs host a match like this. I mean, I know that was a concentration group during the offseason to get these yeah. players ready for those kinds of environments. Yeah, it could be. It could be the lesson. Certainly, at times, I don't know if we can pick and choose uh, the hope whether that happens or not. Uh, availability, percentage, all these things. So, um, whatever happens, I think it will be right, right? If we're at home, we will have a little bit of advantage. If we're away, we'll have this opportunity to test the squad on, on, on those. Um, Environments. I always appreciate that. I always appreciate when you go to, you know, clubs that probably are not in first division and they bring the energy, the fans are very excited and, and uh, you know, pack the stadiums with that, that the excitement. I, I, I always like to play in those environments and I would like my players to experience some of that, but whatever happens will be super. Gonzalo, I want to ask you about Daniel Rios. You've had a couple weeks with him now. Um, how has he adapted to what you want out of the number nine and how has the team adapted to what he brings that's a little different? Well, I think there's no better adaptation than scoring a goal, and after that, probably you, you gain more confidence. I think at times his confidence as well, but uh, the attribute that he has is very technical. He's a guy that you can see that he can drop in, in angles almost as a more as a second striker to, to, to bounce back passes to the midfielders and from there bring him back. But I need him constantly inside the box, so not just because he's capable of dropping and combining well and trying to, to, to help in the build up. Uh, then okay, but if we get in the in good areas to grow, there's no nine. That, that, is, that is not a good sign. Um, so uh, I think he's adapting to that uh, specific environment where it's only one nine, and he has to hold that position a, a little bit more. Um, but he's been very good. You can see he can score goals. He doesn't need many chances to score goals, which is good. And again, nine goals out of my three strikers is not a bad record to have, especially from where we came from uh, a couple of years ago. And so I think uh, right now the standard is very high. There's real competition in there. And uh, it's again, the depth of the team is shown very well. Gonzalo, gracias en la defensa. Eh, hablamos algunas veces acerca de línea de tres, línea de cinco. Hoy te has quedado con una línea de cuatro. Bueno, así lo veo yo, línea de cuatro. ¿Te, te sientes más cómodo ahora como estás jugando en la saga más que los años anteriores? No, no, pasa que la estructura para mí no es tan, tan importante. La estructura con la que juegues y tus, este, tus, si tus defensores no están comprometidos con la defensa y no están con, con la capacidad de, de resolver las situaciones que tienen que resolver, que es cortar centros, cortar tiros, desbloquear, poner el cuerpo por delante para, para, para bloquear los tiros. Si tu defensa no está concentrada en eso y no tiene esa habilidad, entonces tu línea de seis es lo mismo, no te goles. Eh, Creo yo que es mucho más el, la mejora individual de los jugadores, la mejora, la, el, el, el compromiso que tienen con el defender hoy en día. Podemos defender a veces con línea de tres y si el compromiso está ahí, no hay gol. Es, es para mí mucho más una situación de, de acciones defensivas y la calidad de las acciones defensivas que, que de la estructura de línea de cuatro defensivas. All right, now with Gonzalo Pineda pre previewing the matchup tomorrow between. <coughs> FC Cincinnati and Atlanta United, and also touching on the U.S. Open Cup, which Atlanta United will be starting in the next round of matches in May, and actually will host, I believe, Independence uh, out of uh, Charlotte in the opening match. So that will be very interesting to see what happens there and uh, much more. Thank you for listening and watching this latest edition of the original Free Kick, as always. Follow everything that we do. Go to the mothership to sportsinquire.net. And also go to our social media platforms on YouTube, or our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter under Sports Inquire. And then finally, <coughs> head to our other platforms on YouTube, SoundCloud, and Spotify to search Sports Inquire or just look me up, E. Marcel Portute. Until next time, good fight, good night, and be safe.